Hey there, I'm Trinity Chavez and we're on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I'm here with Don Wood, the Chief Executive of Federal Realty. Hi Don, thank you so much for joining us. Trinity, thanks for giving me the time. Of course. So we were just talking about how you've been with the New York Stock Exchange for 60 years. Yeah. I mean, that's a really long marriage. The, first of all, it's a great company, but it's got to be partnered up with the Red Exchange, and the New York Stock Exchange does this for us. This is the big show. This is where a lot of the real estate companies are, and uh, love being here, to tell you the truth. And tell me, what have been some of the most memorable experiences that you've had with the New York Stock Exchange? Well, look, the, at, at the end of the day, we're about long-term growth. We're about a company that kind of builds great stuff and operates great retail properties over the years. and, and when you talk about a company that's been around since 1962, and more importantly, a company that has increased its dividend every year since 1967, it's 1967, every year shareholders have gotten more yes. on a per share basis, where else would you want to be represented? So we've come and we've rung, rung the bell a couple of times uh, here. Uh, team has been great to work with and uh, just real proud of the partnership. And we're talking about 50 years, actually 55 years. 55. Of consistently increased dividends. Yeah. I mean, that's that's incredible. It's, how how does that happen? It happens with great quality real estate. You know, check this out. This is kind of kind of wild. We just got this this stuff in. Within three miles yeah. of federal realties properties, yeah. there are 175,000 people, mm -hmm. which equates to about 68,000 households with average incomes of $150,000. Wow. When you put that together, you know what that means? What does it mean? 10, over $10 billion of purchasing power within three miles of our shopping centers. That means no matter what happens to the economy, how things go, good, bad, cyclical business, we'll be there with the spending power to be able to power through it. That's the only way, with quality real estate like that, that's the only way that you can raise a dividend yes. every single year since yes. 19... 67. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. It's the best there is. Okay? I know. I don't mean to interrupt. You I are getting it, an extra you know what, hour and a half of it's your day life. being here. Okay. You got the best there is. It's great to see you, you too. Okay? Love you too, Jim. Jim. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, man. Please oh, don't man. make me do that again. That was as good as I could possibly do it for Pete's no, sake. What Holy a good smoke. <laughs> Um, oh, actually, that was to my next point. I saw your interview with Jim Cramer back in 2020 in the height of the pandemic. We obviously yeah. thought brick and mortar stores were a thing of the past. Everybody was concerned about restaurants. People weren't going to restaurants, obviously, during COVID lockdown. And I mean, in the real estate sector was heavily impacted, right? right. But we were. Tell me, tell we me about were, that. But at the end of the day, people are social creatures. Yeah. And and the notion that that the service of, of only online shopping. Online mm -hmm. shopping is so important. It's yeah. such a critical part to how we run our lives, but making it a substitute for being together, to be able to shop, to be able to, to go out for, for restaurants and gyms and stuff like that, never. Yeah. <laughs> Not as long as we're talking about human beings. Absolutely. And so we knew, and we had set ourselves up really strong, a very strong balance sheet going into it. So we knew if we could plow our way through this, that on the other side, it was gonna be a whole lot better. It is. Well, I mean, you guys hung in there, right? You stayed strong. And even during the height of the pandemic, you continue to increase those dividends for your shareholders, right? Yeah. So, Trinity, I very much believe that there's a pact, mm -hmm. if you will, an unofficial pact between an investor and a REIT and the REIT, the, the REIT itself, the management team, yeah. to pay a dividend. That's a critical component of the total return that, that happens. So, to me and to our board and the way we thought about it, the first thing you do with crisis is not to rip that payment no. away. That's a critical thing for, for the total return. You so, show loyalty, you show dedication, you invest in what you believe and it's we, truly showed. I mean, look do. at how you're winning right now, right? I really appreciate that because, you know, yeah, recognizing that is a key component to how we're built, why we're built the way we are. and. You know, I hope we go another 55 years. And you've really stayed true to your motto, work, live, play, right? Yeah, the mixed use part of our business, and we don't do, just do mixed use. We're, we are great retail destinations, and sometimes that's a grocery anchored shopping center, mm -hmm. sometimes it's a power center, sometimes it's a mixed use community. Whatever that particular community needs, the best environment in that community is what we try to do. And so in the cases where we do have, have residential over retail and office, uh, over retail, et cetera. It's, it's more than just the shopping experience, it's the living experience. And speaking of the environment, are you doing any environmental efforts oh as a company? Can you tell me about that? I can. I'd love you, first of all, we just published our most recent sustainability report yeah. uh, just, just last month. 
check it out. I'd, I'd love for your viewers to check it out because it details the things that we do, not because ESG or cool new letters. Long before ESG were letters and meaning what they mean today, yeah, yeah. we were effectively um, uh, creating tenant spaces environmentally friendly. We trademarked something called a green box, which mm -hmm. is how you build out. In 2008 or 10, yeah. a long time before that, we are all about, it's our way of life mm -hmm. in the urban communities that, that we um, primarily do business in. ESG is more than just the initials, it's, it's who we are. Now would you say that that is probably key in what sets you apart from the real estate sector? It's one of many, it's one of many things, frankly. That, what do you think it, is the main thing that sets no you apart? There is no question in my mind that the quality of our real estate, those demographics that I gave you, there's nobody else that can say that. Uh -huh. And so when you're starting with a foundation that's, that's that strong, you can add to that foundation with other components of your business plan to truly differentiate it. Mm -hmm. We're a multifaceted business plan. We're not only reliant on any one thing, and that's why we develop, that's why we acquire, it's why we have different types of properties in only, I believe, the best markets in the United States. Now, you've been with the company since 1998, <laughs> right? 98, yeah. Yes, yes, and you've sort of grown up with the New York Stock Exchange because the company's been with the exchange for so long. That's right. What has been some of your memorable moments? Ring the bell. <laughs> I mean, everybody ought to ring the bell. They really, they really ought to as part of the, re the relationship yeah. here. But you know, look, the stock exchange has had its its issues over, over the years. We, we're in business, we all do. Mm -hmm. Effectively having that loyalty to them, mm -hmm. just like we do to our own investors, like we do to our, our, our own tenants, uh, it's what it's all about because nobody can do this business alone, any business. You gotta be partners and finding the right partners is one of the hardest parts. And that is a key thing that you said right there, really building that relationship. Have to. Would, would you say after you partnered with the NYSC that that really helped elevate your business to the next level? Yeah, well, the, I, I, I wouldn't say that. I would say though that, that in the real estate field in particular, uh, going way back, I mean, we're talking about the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Effectively, there is, there is a, a, to me, a fundamental bond between real estate investing and the big board. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's, it may not be the same in tech, it may not be the same in other businesses. For real estate, that's how strongly I feel about it. Now let's talk about your vision, okay? So the coronavirus pandemic, obviously we saw the worst of it. We're coming out of it slowly. Mm -hmm. What is your vision for the future? The, there, is, there is no question that the greatest thing to come out of COVID yeah. was, was the general population's realization of how important, so, how important socialization is. And so our investments in our, our properties much more focused, even more than before, which is always a big part of us. Uh, Placemaking, uh, outside areas to to sit to gather. My vision for a a you know a piece of real estate is I want that to be the living room, if you will, mm -hmm. of the community, so that if there's a family in the community in those first ring suburbs, which is, is where they were, maybe the the uh, uh, mom comes and has something picked up curbside delivery in the middle of the day, the whole family comes back together for dinner that night at that place. The next morning, the older daughter comes for a cup of coffee and sit with her, her laptop. It basically becomes a critical component of the lifestyle of that family. When you do that, you get it all. Well, it's not just about real estate, right? It's building relationships. It's Always. having that social security. It's making friends and really developing from there. It's the way it works. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I think we're going to end it on that note. Great. Thanks for the time. Of course.